starting off with a killer Rick and Morty cover. Rick and Morty Youth in Rickvolt, issue number one. This is a book that came out this last week. And uh, this is the one in 10 variant that's very uh, Communist Party propaganda poster ish. I like it. I got two coming in the mail. So. Do you? <laughs> nice. Yeah. I pre ordered it. Yeah, this does not look like a Rick and Morty book. Like, usually it's, there's a lot of greens and stuff like that. And this is all red and yellow and orange. So it uh, does not look like a Rick and Morty Um are they still doing Rick and Morty or did like on TV? Yeah. Ten seasons, so. baby. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. They just came out with uh, this, this guy in the front, um, a new series on HBO max. I think it's on HBO max. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. But... Nice. Oh, it's, oh, it's a spinoff Morty series. Oh, they're doing the, they're doing a Rick and Morty um, anime style. Yeah. Did, that's like, what a... it is. It's that's what yeah. it is. It's called like animation or something. And this, uh, this dude's in it. So Rick and Morty anime. Yeah. So they had a, they had in between seasons, they had like the special or whatever. And I guess the reception was really good. So they're, they're doing a full, like full on series for that. Weird. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, this one's a, this one's a one in 10. It's selling for like about 15. Um, so it's, there's not very many of them out there though that's what was kind of surprising because it is a number one yeah but i don't know if people just are have not been buying any rick and morty for a while and this one didn't really get ordered heavily so i don't know it's just one of those that the cover is pretty good um after all that drama with the the co-creator justin roland yeah he he got canceled and then proven not guilty but then he still lost all his his contracts for all the different TV shows and stuff like that. He yep. was even like heavily involved in the comics. So I think that, you know, they started not doing the ongoing series for the last like six months and they've just been doing mini series. Hmm. So I like, I figured one of them would have to eventually pop, right? Just because like, you know, they still have a cult fan base. I mean, I, I would still consider myself a fan of the show. Yeah. So. Rick and Morty is a tough spec because they, now they i mean they come out one in tens every time they have an issue now rather than foc unlocked variants or reveals and uh i feel like none of them pop and it's tough this one did i saw the cover and i was like oh man i think this this has got a good chance so not much but it's cool Yeah. yeah good shit all right moving on we've got werewolf by night the red band Issue one, Jeff to call one in 50. Uh, man, there has been some Jeff to call books that have come out, uh, covers that have come out recently. They're just fucking fire. Um, this one's great. Did you guys see the Wonder Woman all new, all in Wonder Woman? Oh my god, uh, he's been on another level as of late. Nah, pulled it up. You haven't seen it? Nah, I'll pull it up. is it a mama? It is a mama. Really? As a matter of fact, I think uh, our boy Long Short has. Well, so is this one, Joe. It's okay. It's okay? It's okay. There you go, Joe. Mama! Man, that's fucking. (laughs) I love the skulls in the background. Oh, wow! Yeah, nice, nice right? Style. The design uh, yeah. styling he's doing with the crows, like, bro, that looks expensive, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think DeCall's like become that type of guy. That uh, what were those? The the name of those old eighties posters that you used to see all the time that were on the cover of Duran Duran. He reminds me like of a newer version of that Nagel or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Yeah, I every time I think of Jeff DeCall, I think of Depeche Mode. Yeah, <laughs> this, is an, d- this is another one. Gonna, Look at yeah. that. He had a release this week with a, a AWA with an Upshot. Yeah, it was a cover A, it was a really good cover. Let's just, um, you know, do a slide of all DeCall covers and, and put on music for the masses and just let it play. <laughs> I'm down. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm you down. mean, I, been? I just opened huh? it. <laughs> just for long short, so we're just gonna play 
play nothing but the call covers all day. Trust me, every time I touch a to call book, I open, I unbox one, I see one on the screen. The only thing I think about, besides the beauty of the cover and should I buy it, is Mr. Longshore. Oh, this one's selling for not too bad, eighty dollars out the gate. This is a brand new book for for this one. That's not bad for a one in fifty. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of sales for it. That which, I mean, I know that they've been like. I don't know, using these red bands to death. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, still doing decent. Um, this came out, I think, last week. But, I mean, it's... I think it's a good cover. I think it's a good enough cover to... Hell, yeah. To, you know, if you can get it cheap enough, it, it might be one to just sit, you know, sit on for a while. I agree. It's a, it's a different red band cover, like you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. All right, moving on. We've got a beautiful Jenny Frizen hack slash number five cover. Um, this is one of her better early covers. Uh, it's just fantastic design on it. Um, love it. And I, I, dude, you know, this one's going for quite a bit in the 9 8. 330 is, is quite a bit for, for this book in the 9 8. But yeah, because it's just an A cover. It's just yeah, a regular cover. It's just the regular cover. But here's the thing about these sla hack slash books. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do something I normally don't do because I know it's gonna piss me off when all these books get super expensive. <laughs> but basically every hack slash book cover is a decent cover. Uh, especially on this main series. I mean, every fucking single one of them, man are like worthy of being like, oh, I'd probably buy that and if I saw it in a bin. I mean, just fantastic, dude. Yeah, there some of them are have a weird look to them. And I don't know like some of some of them are, like look strange. I don't know why, but um I don't yeah. know. I mean if you're if you're if you're going to like look through back issue bins and you're not looking for hack slash books to try mm -hmm. and find some of the, some of the ones, um, hard to identify them, huh? Yeah. Then you're, you're kind of missing out, but, um, because there are some, there are some, I love this one, especially some of the, some of the variants are really good. Some of them are, <clears throat> this the one. B covers are, are great. Almost all the variants are great. There's a, uh, Casa Grande cover that is, fantastic on this one too but i mean they're just uh amazing shout out tim seeley i like just the beautiful the best. Yeah, that, the that number good. 15 that that number 15 b cover is, is yeah really creepy is really creepy just wait i love this one right here that one's good i like I that 18 that's the uh that's like the um scooby-doo homage I really love this one right here, the uh, Elena Casagrande one. Check this out. Hold on. <laughs> Let me do this. Go back. Look at this. Yeah. That's hardcore, yeah. dude. Yeah, because she's cutting up rather than... Yes. Oh, oh man. <laughs> hardcore. You're saying she's she's going down the highway instead of across the street? Yeah, basically, she's doing it the right way to get. Look at this yourself. one for issue number twenty-three. Shout out to cover price, of course, the amazing cover price. Look at that, wicked, absolutely mm -hmm. wicked. So, again, all these hack slash Edward, covers. Edward, Edward Scissorhands' sister, bro. Right. <laughs> Just amazing stuff. So that being said, if you're not looking for hack slash in back issue bins, you need to start. Just just start. You not it's they're hard to find, but uh, yeah, it's very very tough to to uh, pass up any hack slash books. And this one for three thirty for a nine eight is not too bad. I love That's the Phantom Awe character too. So. Such a cool character. Has that almost uh, Dia de los Muertos feel to it. All right. Hey, that moving. was pretty good, Brian. Right? You like I that? Know, you los Muertos. 
Moving on to hey, hey Brian, your blue eyes are turning brown, is it? <laughs> <laughs> blood in, blood out, baby. Hey, De- hey, DeVoe said you can sort the whole series by price to see the most valuable. You can. They're pretty amazing. And you can the uh, you can put in the variants now. That's some awesome too. So shout out to Hell our yeah. boys over at Cover Price. They're the best. Uh next we have Batman number one, the Capullo Snyder, and a book that is the forgotten issue, the forgotten no more. The newsstand is the one that everybody forgot about, and it is just killing it right now. Four hundred and sixty-five dollars raw Oof. on a secondary sale. Yeah, that's that's in, that's insane. Um especially when there's not re- now the the first what 20 issues of this probably 25 issues was probably the best one of the best batman stories yeah like in modern times um but this number one didn't really other than it just being the number one it really didn't have i mean it didn't have anything new no new characters nothing like that um but it did just love just people just love this capullo cover yeah yeah is this first so quarter owls no, uh-uh. no, yeah. there was no quarter vowels didn't show up until like four, six, or six, four, four or yeah. six. Yeah. Um, mentioned um, in two or something like that, right? Yeah, there was like the little, uh, the little token or something was shown in two, but it wasn't, I mean, it was just or something like that, but or maybe it was in one, it may have been, in, it may have been in one, like where they it was like a bookmark or something like that, but it wasn't gotcha. the, the appearance, but um. But, you know, I agree. The Capullo covers on these were just so good. Um, I was not around. I was not. I was completely out of comics when the new 52 started. But when I got back in, it was probably on issue like maybe 12, Mm -hmm. maybe 13, something like that. And that's when I started trying to go back and try and get all the uh, the, uh, the the digital copy um, variants. Um, of this but i basically oh, yeah. kind of went yeah i went backwards but i get i don't even think i realized back then that there was a new stand um mm. and you have to be careful right because there's that that walmart one that's not the actual new stand or something like that right mm. there it was slightly different than this really I didn't oh know. oh where it has like a different upc code or something like that Some, something there's something different and i can't remember um yeah, the one. Yeah, I remember that. The one that first started showing up in the Walmart packs. Yeah, it's something different. I can't. Maybe it doesn't even have a barcode or something like that. I can't remember, but there was something different about the Walmart version of this. It was sideways. It's sideways rather than. Is sideways. that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, so I one thing I do remember about this book is uh, when it first showed up on like either the Almost Ten or or maybe even the hot 10. I can't remember the last time this was on. But anyways, I just remember a lot of people saying in like different forum groups, like, oh, it's it's more common than you think, like blah, blah, blah. I mean, if it was that common, like wouldn't more copies have shown up to market by this point in time? Like, because I'm guessing yeah. it was on the list, like what, six months ago or something like that? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, with the with that nine eight sale or whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, like Rawls of these still. I mean, they were selling for like two something, but this one this one sold for like double what Rawls were normally selling for. Um, hmm. Interesting. But yeah, not bad. All right, moving on. Next, we've got three amazing books, and we're going to tell you about five total. This is Naughty and Nice, The Good Girl Art of Bruce Tim. And these Mama. are the teasers. They did uh, three three of these, uh, two for 2012, one for 2011. Damn. And um, they are fantastic. We've talked about them before on House of Stein, and uh, it's nice to see them all at once. And they're selling again on the secondary market. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Swing. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah. I mean, basically, these are. I mean, these are now like really now. So they're they are numbered. I think out of a thousand. Um, and I, 
I don't want to, I wouldn't swear to it, but they may all be signed by Bruce Tim, but I don't know that for sure. Um, but you can see that they were $15 like when to buy them. Um, but these are basically 100 to $200 each. Um, the one wow. is, and I think it may be the, the redheaded one mm -hmm. is not as expensive. It's, it's the newer version. Um, maybe mm -hmm. from like, I don't know which one. I, I can't remember exactly, but the no, that the, redhead looks expensive. Yeah, the 2013 um, <laughs> one is the newest one. Yeah, but the white one for sure, and the uh, I'm trying to just look at the it. one two we just saw. Through. The one with the one, they, they say 2012 on it, 2011 and 2013 on each one. The one that says 2013 is uh, the one that's worth the less less amount. Yeah, yeah, the earlier ones, but I think they're all numbered out of a thousand. Yeah. Um. Uh, like I said, I'm don't quote me on it, but I think either most of them or all of them are signed. Um, you know, but they're very, very expensive. I would think that Bruce Tim stuff in general is, especially the harder to find stuff. Um, is is getting even sketchbooks is getting very expensive. Um, he has his own. I, I think the, the uh, nostalgia in all of us just with going back to the Batman stuff. Um, we just, I don't know. We I think we just flock back to Bruce Tim that, that look for some yeah. reason. So. Yeah. Well, did you know about these? There's also these, there's these hard covers. Nadia and Nice, the girl, girl art of Bruce Tim. This is the paperback. Um, you can get this right now at flesk, flex, flesk publications.com. Uh, it's 30, 40 bucks. They've got them in, in, in stock. And you also get these badass prints with it. You get these two eight and a half by 11 mini prints, and they're really good. They look beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah. I like that. That one on the right. I wish that was a cover on something. I That's... know. That could be a mystique cover. Yeah, that but would be. Isn't cool. that the girl from? Uh, it also could be the girl from. Uh, Lo uh, what's her name? Uh, Lola or not Lola? Run Lola Lund, but uh, from the check checkpoint or whatever the something card, whatever that Bruce Willis movie is. Cannabis. I apologize. Lilu, Lilu. There we go. Lilu. Oh, nice. Doesn't that kind of look? Um, like yeah. So there's that. So can I, can... Look at that. And then there's this. Naughty and Nice, the good girl art of Bruce Tim, signed and numbered hardcover edition artist proof. 1500 bucks. There's only one left. So if you want it, you got to go get it. It was originally 100 bucks. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Right, so there you go. A hundred, a thousand copy run on these too. But this is the artist proof, so that's why it's selling for so much. So, so Brian, so Brian, you know how a lot of times I end up showing books on, um, on here that you're like, I wish you wouldn't have shown that because I've been looking for that or something like that, and then now, now everybody knows about it or whatever. Um, that website that you actually just had up, that Stuart Ing books, uh -huh. um. That is a website that I have gone on to many times, um, be, and um, and I don't think necessarily many people know about it. But it is if you are looking for um, like sketchbook type things, um, there are a ton of sketchbooks on that Stuart Ng book. So if you if you like those, that is a great play. That is a great website um, to go to to find what you want. How about I this mean, one? like a ton of sketchbooks. Art Adams, a ton of them. I mean, look at all these. Yeah. Congratulations, everybody. You just got cornbread like no other. Like you get oh, every, you... every day that you watch The House of Stein. Yeah. You should have sent that to us first. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. So I have a question. Why does it say cis in the corner? So... <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, dude. Oh, <laughs> did did I just on. ruin it for everyone? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Next. 
this is amazing. Chuckle Comics by Chuck E. Cheese. This is Chuckle Chuckle Comics number one, a new Chuck E. Cheese collectible from Showbiz Pizza Time Publishing in 1996. Stein, you continue to amaze me, my friend. Man, I want this thing. I did. I don't. I never knew that there was a Chuck E. Cheese slash Showbiz Pizza comic book. Had no idea. Um, but I want this so bad now that I'm like, I've got. I'm, but I only want to find it in person. But I have no idea where you would find this. Um, I don't know how this was distributed. Um, if anybody knows how this was actually distributed, I would love to know um, because it would probably make it a little easier to find if you knew how it was distribu distributed. Um, did you guys have, like in your areas, did you have just Chuck E. Cheese or did they start at Showbiz Pizza? We had Chuck E. Cheese and, and just Chuck E. Cheese. And then we had a place called Pistol Pete's too. And they were different yeah, animatronics. Yeah, because so we, um, had, we had Chuck E. Cheese and then yep. we had Mr. Daddy's. Okay, so here in Ohio, we had Showbiz Pizza and then Chuck E. Cheese bought out Showbiz Pizza. Um, so when I was a kid, it was Showbiz Pizza. Um, and I was really mad at Chuck E. Cheese when they bought out Showbiz. But this is really interesting that this was published by Showbiz Pizza, but it was Chuck E. Cheese um, was the, was the title. The yeah, oh. very strange. You can go you read this, was... by the way, if anybody wants to go read it. You, the uh, Showbiz Pizza actually put this uh, on the internet for people to go read. There's a PDF. So, here you go. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the things that like remind me of my childhood... Um, 100%. Those are, things that, those are things that you just like... You, you forget about them until you see them again. You're like, oh, man, that was like really good times back then nostalgia brother that's that's the key nostalgia spider spidey guy murph is writing in the chat it was a price you could redeem your tickets and for and i think it was like ten thousand dollar tickets for a comic book i actually believe i had one at one point in time maybe a hundred thousand i can't remember produced in association with navigator comics division of, of sideshow adventures inc Wow, that's very interesting. It was to man. soften it. It was to soften the blow from Showbiz closing down, but yeah. you know, obviously, Stein didn't get the comic. I did not get the comic. I oh, I I, I was. I mean, so this was ninety six. So I was. So I was at least in my twenties then. So it wasn't like I was going to Chuck E. Cheese. That was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but ten I years prior, kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> ten years prior to that was I. Don't, I can't remember exactly when. Chuck E. Cheese bought out Showbiz, um, but when they because so so in the little animatronics thing, the the Showbiz Pizza was a giant bear, and so when they Chuck E. Cheese bought them, they took the bear out and put the, the stupid mouse um, or whatever that is. That's a mouse, right? I'm assuming. Um, so like I'm like no, I don't. I I'm not going because they they <laughs> took away the bear. You know what I noticed about Stein? Anything that he doesn't like is stupid. <laughs> that's most people, that, brother. That, that's probably, hey, but you know what? I love it's, it. it. It's stupid, but I'm glad that somebody else liked it. <laughs> yeah, I remember the drummer at all our pizza places was a gorilla. <laughs> and, right? It, that's, it was a gorilla. It was a, this crazy, badass, animatomic gorilla that was just badass. And, and then uh, when Pistol Pete's came, it like changed to like a like a cowboy. Like it had a cow I don't remember what it was. Was it like a burrow or something that had a cowboy hat on? Yeah, that was weird. I've never went to Pistol Pete's, so I don't know. Nah, that man, there, there's like a, a a video game, uh retro video game place and uh sells some comic books in the back and always but it's next to a Chuck E. Cheese. And the fucking place are they, is are they allowed to sell those next to a Chuck E. Cheese? Man, but hey, dude, the place is always packed and it's small. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> man, that pizza's not that good. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, does it suck? Because like my man, memory tells me it was trapped, great. Dude. It my memory says it was great, 
but I haven't been in a long pizza, time show, pizza since Showbiz Pizza. So, <laughs> have you guys ever uh, take take uh, at Chuck E. Cheese? You know, taking a dip in in the balls when the balls when you had the balls, in, you know those plastic balls. The ball right? I wanted to, dude, but I was always too fat. Why do those? Th- yeah, me too. Why do those things smell like piss? I'm sorry, it wasn't. Because the kids peed in it, dude. Oh my god. It I'm wasn't like a fool. Kids are peeing in it. I'm wrong. It wasn't the gorilla that played the drums. He played the the keyboard. That's what it was. Or keyboard, yeah. You remember? Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, like this is crazy. Look at this. This is the one I remember though, right here. And then look at these. Here, here are the animatron. Here they all are. Holy cow! Look at this. This is. What is it? Five Nights at Freddy's, like scary type shit, right here. Oh yeah, it does look like that. Yeah, you remember these? I totally remember every single one of these, dude. Yeah, the dog was the drummer. It was some weird stuff back then. We we yeah. did things really weird back in the eighties and nineties. Fats Geronimo was his name. The Rock of Fire oh, explosion. So this is all the after effects of like the the 60s and 80s with like you know the influence of acid and cocaine is that what i'm like leading to believe (laughs) on this oh they whitewashed them they whitewashed them in 2007 damn (laughs) damn (laughs) is the the one behind gold uh yeah no that's just the shine that's the shine (laughs) yeah that's just the shine dude that's just the shine (laughs) oh my god Disavow, bad joke. All right, just as just but bad as dipping your salty chocolate Nuts balls and in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. That being said, sixty bucks for this doesn't uh, sound like too bad of a of a deal. Well, sixty dollars in terrible condition. Like yes, terrible. Wow. Um, what's like funny is the, you're selling it. Yeah, definitely. And what's funny is uh, like yours, like you know, twenty color breaking creases along the spine and then the top left corner was like smashed and i looked at the description and the, the person listening said comic in mint condition of course <laughs> of course they said mint yeah. comic yeah. smells um, like pizza I, I think the i think the seller was like grammy's attic or something like that. it was so weird it was mint. it recently graded by cgc or something oh <laughs> probably <laughs> moving on all new, all different Avengers number one. This is the Alex Ross second sketch incentive. They did a regular one of the regular cover, and then they did this one, which is a different cover, of course. Uh, that is the more rare one, I imagine. Is that is that the case? Yeah. Richie Richie sent this one to me, so Richie may know more about this one than I do. Um... Yeah, so I was. Uh, this was actually signed by Stan Lee, like like it says on Ooh. the screen. And I was uh, writing the other half of the by the dip list. Aaron wrote the first half. I wrote the second from last week, and I it just popped up on on uh, one thirty point, and I was like, "What is that twenty nine hundred? And I saw what did it have been? Did you see the sales like sixty three bids or sixty two bids? It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, so I don't I, remember. Did this come directly from I Ross? I thought this was or, a 1 in 200. It's not. Is that what it was? I don't know. I thought it was. No, I, I know there's a. So. I thought there was a 1 in 100 and a 1 in 200. Um, I mean, it I mean, it was a first Avengers. So, I mean, it seems like there. if it was just even a 1 in 200, it seems like there would still be quite a few of them out there. Um. But it, yeah, it, so one in two hundred, exactly. One in two hundred. Okay, that looks wrong. So no, so no. This is the one in two hundred right here. This is the other version. So the one in two hundred. Here's the A cover. Okay, that's the A cover. The one in two hundred is a sketch of that. Here's the one in two hundred, and this one mm. just goes by. Incentive Alex Ross vintage sketch variant. So he hmm. did a vintage sketch color variant. He did a vintage color variant for this right here. 
This is called the Incentive Alex Ross Vintage Color Variant. And then he did an incentive for that, too. All new, all different Avengers Vintage Incentive Alex Ross Vintage Sketch Variant. So I don't know how many of them that were made or what they were, but it doesn't... It's it's really weird. A lot of people might not might just uh, slip on her and just walk right past this. But you know who I bet has a bunch of these in his warehouse? Drew Alex at Ross. Wanted Com- Drew at Wanted Comics. You fucking got it. This he's a master oh. at finding these type of books. I wonder I why. Alex... Go ahead, ye. I was I was guessing Alex Ross because I'm looking at his website. You can buy it on his website right now. My comic shop it. says it's a one in one fifty. Okay. Um, why do you think so? Like on that that other one with with um, Kamala on it, the mm-hmm. the sketch goes all the way through the top. Mm-hmm. But on this one, they like chopped it off and put the barcode at the top next to the name, even though the color version Loki goes all the way to the top of the book. Yeah, that's a great question. That's very cool. strange. It mm-hmm. really looks really odd with that yeah. barcode right next to it. Just looks real strange. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Why. I don't know why this whole... Yeah, whoever designed the cover didn't know how to use Photoshop, right? I guess. I mean, Stanley signatures are not cheap, but they're not twenty nine hundred dollars expensive. So I don't know why this one sold for so much. Yeah, with so many bits, it's not like it was like a bin or bo. We could question it. Well, signed by Stan Lee. It's a cool book to get signed by Stan Lee. Yeah, uh, just to let you guys know, um, if you do like these Alex Ross, if you like Alex Ross and you do like these sketches, um, Immortal Hulk has a bunch of second prints of the exact same co- of cover A that Alex Ross did of this same design, and they're all like dollar books. Really cool. There you go. I think people don't like Alex Ross sketches as much, and I'll say it. Uh, Alex Ross's sketches aren't as good as McFarlane or Lee, Jim Lee Sorry. or Sylvester's sketches because Alex Ross isn't putting all his effort into a pencil sketch. He's putting all his effort into a painting. You know. Well, I like them. I think they're, they're really good. good. They're good. I just don't think they're as they look as good as like say like a Stephen Platt pencil sketch or. Uh, a Jim Lee pencil sketch, you know what I mean? Because he's not putting all the, he's not putting all his effort into shading and and stuff that they might, because he knows he's just gonna paint right over it. So well, it's he just doesn't do the color, idea. right? He doesn't yeah. do color. Oh yeah, he's he? painting it. Yeah, it's paint. It's it's colored by him and everything. Alex Ross okay. is yeah, he's he's painting the color. You know, it's not like he's painting in black and white. Yeah. Which is weird because yeah. I think Jim Jim Lee stuff actually looks better as pencils than Me too. a lot of times than it does colored. Me yeah, too. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think that Jim Lee is like up there as the best sketch pencil sketch, you know, guy. And Ross is more of a, he's a painter. So anyways, uh, moving on next, we have Alfredo. Number one, this is a killer, killer book. Uh, you guys know I love those like cool music books. Uh, this was a book that I don't know how it was given out, if it was sold or what, but it's based on an album by uh, Freddie Gibbs and the Alchemist called Alfredo back in 2020. And uh, a classic album that uh, is you know rated very highly on many people's scales of uh, how good an album is eight to eight, eight out of ten or four out of five. Uh, this one's giving a four point six three out of five. So very very good album. And this is a killer comic book, and uh, I love the cover of this too. You you guys know how to make Alfredo from scratch, bro? Uh-uh. Not with Just bullets. Gunpowder. Huh? Not with Add bullets. Gunpowder. Yeah. No heavy whipping cream, Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, garlic salt. Really? Mm-hmm. Heavy oh, whipping. Oh, is that cream. how you make it from scratch? Mm-hmm. Nice. nice. Very nice. Uh, if anybody knows in the chat how to how that this book came out, if it was given away, if it was a promo, I'd like to know because uh, I feel like thirty dollars for this book might be cheap. Well, it was thirty dollars, but this one was in VG condition, so it was, it was, it was rough. 
Um, <laughs> and also the, and I, I don't know for, I can't, I'm not going to verify that. I didn't verify this, but the listing mentioned that um, this is Mike Mayhew art in, I don't know if it's inside. Shut but it, up, for real? Yeah. And I think it might be Del Mundo as well. So no um, way. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, Mike Del Mundo. Mike Del Mundo is the artist that I'm getting from Key Collector. Wow. Um, but I don't know if it's the cover that's Mayhew. Um, I didn't see a signature on it, like you, like you would. But I, I could be wrong. But like I said, it did. Um, um the listings, the listing said uh, Mayhew. So I don't know how they got. I don't know how they got such big um, artists to do this bowl, but bowl of Alfredo. yeah that's crazy right yeah super cool i love stuff like this i Great wonder if they draw niche. food better if they're hungry you know <laughs> i would think it'd right? be really we need hard you to draw, draw a bowl food, right? of alfredo and you can't eat for 24 hours <laughs> mm. okay go <laughs> there we go does it taste better when you scoop a gun into your mouth with it <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna try that being said, <laughs> next we have a beautiful sketch cover. Witchblade number 170, the Mark Silvestri one in five sketch cover. Have you guys seen this? Yeah. Uh, did you guys hear about the new Witchblade variant that's coming out soon? Uh -oh. Did you guys hear about that? Sylvester, is Silvestri doing it? It says here, mm -hmm. holy top cow. We are extremely excited to announce this incentive homage variant with art by Mark Silvestri that pays homage to the timeless and iconic Uncanny X Men 251 cover. Issue three by Evil Marguerite and Pepper Rain will be in stores 91824, and it will have a Witchblade homage cover, but he's already done it. He did it for Witchblade number 170. So you know what I say? Go buy the 170 regular issue, which is that, and go find the 1 and 5, which is very tough to find, and you get the sketch cover of that, which is even better. Don't let them keep reprinting these books. Um, unless they're changing it, don't buy it. That's my opinion on that. I agree. All right? I mean, that, that's, that's the same type of shit they did to John Tyler Christopher with that Wolverine... A negative space variant almost oh, did to him bad, until dude. JTC said, put a damn trade dress on that thing. Th this right here looks ex almost exactly like the original they did in 170, except for this little box right here that has Silvestri's cover for number one on it. It's just, I don't know, man. Is there, is there any difference at all? No. It scooched um, over to the right a little bit. That's yeah. the only difference. Yep. Let me bring it up. I mean, the the birds are even in the same spot. Yeah. It's probably the same drawing and just cropped in a different way. So here's the original. 170. Okay. And here is Silvestri's. So let's do this. And then let's do... Ooh, it it's white smoke instead of purple smoke. There you go. There they are right I next mean, I to guess each the, other. Yeah, I guess the color is... She's more blue, or like it's more bluish than... Yeah. But that's, but that's playing closer homage to the Wolverine book, right? Yep. yep. With the blue? Yep. I mean, get them both. I get it. They're They're both great. But uh, you can tell they had to put the the colorist in now because he's not in on this one. So he must have changed the color. So they must have put the colorist name in here. See his little name right there? Instead of no the name here. Tr trade is slightly different. Yeah. And the trade dress is slightly different. But just barely. Instead yeah. of, it says the Unbreakable instead of Ron Mars and Laura, who, and Laura Braga. But still, well, again, this is this is the whole thing where I don't know. Buy them both. Buy them both. I'll say that. Why not? Buy them both. I love Mark Silvestri. I'm a fan of Witchblade too. So, but I just I just don't want to continue to see publishers reprint iconic covers 
as some type of cash grab because it feels like just like a cash grab. It doesn't feel like you're you're giving us nostalgia, you know, by re releasing it again. It feels like a cash grab. I want I just go buy the original. Make the, the original is collectible in that way. But that being said, you here you guys go. Go get the sketch. One in five. It's a one in five ratio. They're about ninety nine to one hundred and twenty five dollars, uh, and they're just as good in my opinion. So that being said, you know, like. Like, why doesn't Sylvester take it and level it up, you know, and and then sell it like a, a new version of this instead of having somebody else do it? You know what I mean? Yeah, totally, dude. Totally. I mean, see, I, I would buy that, you know, uh, his, uh, what is it, 20 then... years later, 20 years later, uh, I'll, you know, let's see how much uh, Sylvester has developed. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, change it up but then somehow. People would, but then people would complain that he's copying J. Scott Campbell. Why? You, I, I think... Because uh, well, he's you, revamping all his old covers, too. That's true. Anyways. I mean, but it's a thing. <laughs> I, 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 I'd like to see the evolution of an artist... And see, like, this is the way they used to draw and look how much better they've gotten. Some have gotten worse. You know what I mean? Like, you look at Stephen Platt's shit and you look at Frank Miller's shit and JRJR. Uh, JRJR, man, I don't know what the hell happened to him. Yep. But, um, I mean, but some have just gradually gotten better. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Look at what uh, Lobos is doing lately. Anyways, oh, uh, better and better, man. Moving on, we have a special almost 10 book of the week <clears throat> that will lead into a great discussion about Ellie Camacho, aka Ellie Wilson, aka the new Deadpool. Uh, w this week we have Deadpool issue number six from 2016, a book that a lot of people spec'd on for different reasons, aka oh, yeah. Deadpool 2099, to start our conversation about. Ellie Wilson as Deadpool in comics. Richie, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, yeah. So that, that, I mean, that was the question I was asking with Ellie becoming Deadpool. Once she gets the moniker, I mean, not, I don't know. I, I, purists will say officially, you know, say, you know, she's got to be titled and all this stuff, but whatever you want to call it, as soon as she gets the Deadpool suit um, in real time in the 616, what are we calling that? Are we calling that first Ellie Deadpool in the 616? Are we calling that a reintroduction of Ellie Camacho as Deadpool? I mean, what are we calling that? Because in uh, Ellie, De book, Cruz. <laughs> Ellie De La Cruz steals the suit. Like, Ellie, oh, never mind. But anyways, uh, yeah, so this is your first appearance of Deadpool 2099, which is Warda Wilson. That is the other daughter of Wade Wilson. And the second character is Eleanor, a.k.a. Ellie Camacho, as a Deadpool with her own design. Actually, it's not her own design. Actually, she took it from the Zenpool design from the series before when Deadpool had the Zenpool design and Zenpool actually showed up in the Deadpool uh, 3 movie. But long story short, so you go into this and she takes the moniker. She goes in and she goes after Warda Wilson because Warda Wilson um, is trying to kill her father, Wade Wilson. Remember, this is in the future. OK, so you have Deadpool 2099, Warda Wilson. And then in that same reality, you have Ellie Camacho as Deadpool in the Zenpool design. Now you go into 2019 in the Deadpool run, the last issue, issue 15. And uh, she, right here, there you go. She's actually, she's, yeah, there you go. And if you uh, want to go ahead and move forward, she's actually in this book. But during right now, during this situation, during the, the, the dialogue, uh, Deadpool is being threatened by Mephisto. And Mephisto's henchman, which is uh, Weasel, is showing Wade a glimpse into the future of 2099 of, of Deadpool 2099, Warder Wilson, his daughter, and Ellie there as well. So I come up with this 
this is what this is that once she becomes Deadpool in the 616, I think the correct terminology would be your first appearance of Ellie Camacho as Deadpool in chronological because it is actually from the past, this right here, and this is the future. Unfortunately, we go by historic first appearances from a key issue comic or I guess you can say a investment point of view. Um, and this would be the first time she becomes Deadpool here. She's not using the moniker as Deadpool, but she's actually starting the Zenpool design right here. And then what we're going to find out in Deadpool 6 is a continuation of the recent Deadpool 5. That's actually her first cameo. Um, I guess everybody's calling it a cameo because it's like a Deadpool. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, in Incredible Hulk 180, 181 situation. A lot of people don't know that this is like a five, ten dollar book, but that's Ellie Kamasha right there. That's her first appearance. Yep. This is uh, 11, 12 issues before Deadpool 31 that is going, you know, bonkers or whatever. It's probably cooled off by now. But case in point is, is that once it actually happens, shout out to to Left. We had a really good conversation, really nice healthy debate about this and then we come up with uh he came up with a uh, left aka left arrows he come up with a uh, a good point um kind of like uh so i used the uh metaphor or analogy whatever you want to call it of ultimate fallout 4 versus the all uh, ultimate comics all new spider-man when ultimate fallout 4 miles is first appearance but he's wearing a halloween costume and then in that in his solo series with Ultimate Comics, he becomes the all new Spider Man because Nick Fury gives him the suit or sixteen ten, and then Genki at the end says, "Hey, that means you're the new Spider Man." So Left Arrows was saying, "Hey, they, this is you know uh, probably in six or seven when somebody actually says, "Hey, you're Deadpool." So that would be be either a your first appearance of Ellie Camacho as Deadpool in the six one six, or your and or your first chronological appearance of El Macho as, a, um, as dead. Case in point, bottom line, it's a messy situation. Yeah. Okay. So. And it's all over the place. But the, but she has been Deadpool in um, in multiple issues and on covers, which um, Brian is showing here. Thank you, Brian. Yep. And I just wanted to put it on the forefront. Uh, I'm glad that Left Heroes caught this coming uh, FOC because we get to talk about this. And this sounds like a pretty exciting character. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. Woo. So there you go. Deadpool 6, second print. What's up? Thank <laughs> you.